Hi, this is Bill Platoon, Managing Partner with Construction Science. I've been using Primavera products for 25 years, and certainly there's been a lot of changes over that time. We started with a DOS version, moved over to Windows about 12 years later, and eventually we wound up with Primavera P6. Now also, another iteration of Primavera is the Enterprise version, EPPM. And so I'm going to talk about that today. For anyone who's used other versions of P6, this is going to seem quite a bit different. We're going to walk through in this lesson the process of setting up a new project, because it will be rather unfamiliar to you in the web client environment compared to P6 Professional. Now, the first thing you'll probably notice is that everything here looks a bit strange. This is what we call the dashboard. And the dashboard could be sort of a, like the place you go to each morning as you're getting your coffee, gives you an overview of all of the projects that either you're managing or perhaps all the projects being managed by the entire enterprise. And this can be highly customized. We're going to talk about this in a different lesson because the reality is no two dashboards are ever the same. We can do so much with this. But I'll give you an overview by scrolling down here. I've split this up into five different segments. I can do more than that, but what you'll see here is that we have some budget information, project details across from it on the right, and if I scroll down, you'll see that we've got spending by location by different countries. And across from that, we have a pie chart showing the budget for all projects being managed by each project manager. Then below that, we see earned value performance, and across from it, spending by phase. Now, I have to admit, I think I told you five segments. We just expanded this out this morning, and we actually have seven segments. And across the bottom, the last segment, you'll see is the Project Gantt chart. This might look a little bit more familiar to you if you've been using P6 Professional, that typically when we first log in, we're looking at the Project Overview, and it's a little bit like this, but we're going to do some other things here, too, that are necessary for setting up a brand new project. All right. So to set up a project, we actually click on the Projects tab. This is going to take us to a place that P6 Professional users would recognize as being the Enterprise Project Structure. Now, because this program operates through the web, it does take more time. You'll notice I'm actually waiting for a new page to load, and that's the key difference here. Every time we move from one window to another, it's like going to a different page on a website. So we have to deal with the fact that it operates a little bit more slowly, and that's one key point. We'll talk about a few others as we're going along. Now, initially, I can see that one of my projects is open, and a P6 user would recognize it as being the file folder symbol being a bit pulled open. So I can see that CHP is currently open, and it's being managed by me. I'm going to minimize the bottom screen. This does also work a bit differently than P6 Professional. But let's get an idea of how many projects might be open right now. To see all the open projects quickly, rather than scanning down through this list, and certainly in a large database, it can be easy to miss one of these. What I'll do is I'll come up here to Projects and click on this arrow, and then I'll go to Open Projects. Now, I'm clicking on that arrow specifically because that's a menu drop-down. If I just click on the word Projects like I did a moment ago, that's taken me from one of these major tabs like Dashboards to another. And again, because we're waiting for the window to load, this takes a few seconds. But this is the easiest way to confirm which projects are currently open. All right, so there is only one, CHP. Now, I cannot remove it. You'll notice that while I can normally bring it off the screen by using the left arrow, the reality is Primavera is not going to let me close this menu without keeping something open. So what I'll do is I'll just cancel the whole operation. And I'm going to show you the way that you would close everything. And this would go back to what we call File Close All in P6 Professional. Well, we do it a little bit differently here. 
certainly we have to be in the projects tab. We then go to actions and we go to close all. This is the only method for closing all of the projects. You cannot do it from the menu up here. All right, so everything is closed. Let's talk about adding a new project. Similar to P6 Professional, I can put my cursor someplace where I'd like to have the new project. But let's say I need a folder for it. Remember, in Enterprise Project Structure, we had a separate window where we could rearrange and create new nodes for organizing our projects. Well, we don't have an EPS button anymore. So what we do here is we highlight a part of the EPS, right-click, and you'll see that I've got the possibility of adding a sibling or a child. And these terms are slightly different than what we're, we've been used to in the past. Sibling would mean I'm adding something that would be on the same level of the EPS as this one right here. So if I highlight this and I add a sibling, they're equal. Sort of like energy is equal to E and C. The, the child, of course, would be below this. So what I'll do is I'll right-click and I'll put in a child. And now you can see how it's a bit indented. And this brings us to our very first clue with P6 Web. See the asterisk? Whenever we do something that needs to be saved in P6 Web, we have to save it ourselves. There is no automatic save like with P6 Professional. Think of it again as a website. If you were filling out a form on a website and you suddenly close that window, wouldn't you lose all that data? Yes, the same is true here. Now the green symbol in particular is telling me that something is new. In a moment, we're going to see the asterisk with a different background. It'll be yellow. And what yellow is telling us is that we have modified something existing. So understand that those colors even tell us something. And also, I suppose for anybody under the age of 30, they may not know what this is supposed to be telling us. That's a floppy disk symbol. Whenever this lights up dark blue, it's telling you, you've just done something you have to save. So that's another visual clue that you have to do something. All right, so right now I can come in here and I can work on this. And just like in P6 Professional, I give it an ID and a longer name. And I can come in here, I'll just name it after me. It does have to be unique, just like in P6 Professional, we can't have two folders, obviously, with the same name. All right, now notice it's really not saved yet because this is still lit up. So I can click on this and it will save it. All right, so I've created a sibling under E and C, which I'm sure you probably realize is an abbreviation of engineering and construction. I'm going to put my cursor here, which means that's where the new project will actually be added. And that's pretty typical. We create a new node, or what I like to just call a folder, and that's where we're going to put all of our new projects. So I'll right-click, and I'll go to Add Project. Now, similar to what we've been doing in the past, it's going to take you through a little bit of a template here. We need to, we need to give it an ID. So I'll go in here, and I'll say new hotel project, or I'll just call it new hotel baseline here, and keep in mind that the ID has to be a bit shorter than what we can do with the name, and I'm not being too creative today, I might just use the same name for both. All right, for the description, this is a little bit different than what we did in P6 Professional, but you can type some information about the project. I do it here sometimes, or I'll do it in the notebook topic, which you might remember from P6 Professional. Now you'll notice, because I highlighted this particular node, it's already going to put it there. If I had my cursor in the wrong location, I can choose from here to move it to a different node. But I'm happy with where it is. Responsible manager, just like with P6 Professional, would in theory be the group or the person who's managing the project. I'm currently listed as the sponsor of some of these projects, and that's a different term with a different meaning. All right. Must finish by date. I'm not going to fill it out right now. In fact, I typically don't fill this out 
We'll talk about that in other lessons. But I'm ready to create my new project. And again, you'll notice initially that it's just going a little bit slower than what we're used to. In terms of efficiency, I think that it is a bit harder to create projects in the web version because of this lag that you have when you're setting up new projects. In fact, what we've discovered is that sometimes we even need to refresh our screen using F5, which is a typical Windows refresh command. And let's see if we can get this thing to pop up. And you can see that this is what I find frustrating, that sometimes I know the project's there, and it still is not appearing on my screen. If I go to a different tab and then come back, that sometimes is the only way I can really convince the program to refresh itself to the point that I can see what I want to use. Now, we have another issue with Primavera. It's very particular about which version of Java you're using. And I'm sure you've probably dealt with that if you've been using P6 Professional. Now, I'm going to go back to the EPS. And you'll see that Occasionally, we get these menus that pop up by themselves. And finally, there's my project. All right. Now, you might remember, especially in P6 Professional, that we had this Defaults tab in the bottom window. So down here, we would have the ability to set up Project Defaults. Well, it's not here anymore. It's in a different place. And how we do it now is by right-clicking, and you'll see Set project preferences. And this is really important because we don't want to start adding new activities to this project without having a chance to set up our numbering system for those activities, uh, the default calendar, things like that. So I'll click on set project preferences and now you'll see this. So we come in here to defaults and you'll see a lot of the same settings you saw previously that were down in the bottom window when we were looking at projects. Most of this I'd probably leave alone, but you'll see that we have the opportunity here to select which calendar we want to use. And I've got a few in here right now. I'll just leave it alone for now. And that's one other thing I'm going to talk about is how do we set up the calendars. So I'll mention that because when you're creating a new project, naturally it makes sense that you want to have the calendar situation worked out pretty quickly. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to give my project its own prefix. And I think I'll do it something like this. So I've actually got a fairly long prefix called level 01 to indicate the first level. I'll keep the suffix of 1000. And the increment of 10, certainly that's a good idea. We want to leave room for adding additional activities. Some of these other settings I might need to adjust depending on the particular type of project. But for now, I want to get my numbering system set up correctly. And again, you'll notice which calendar we're currently using. Because this is web-based, I have to remember to save those changes. None of that is recorded automatically. All right, so you will see that uh, the screen jumped a little bit, but here's my new project. Now to open the project, we could go back up here. That's one way of doing it, by clicking on the Menu tab. Or because you can see the folders right already open, I can right-click and just say Open. And actually, because the project's open already, the only option I would worry about right now is whether or not I want to open it exclusively. P6 professional users would understand that when you open a project exclusively, no one else can go in there and work on the project while you're working on it. So that while we might want to collaborate at times, this is one of those where we can lock everyone else out until we've made our changes. So because it's already open, this option is actually grayed out. I'm just going to click on the word activities, very similar to what you do in P6 professional. 
And again, our Java is existing that I run with the latest version. I've got two versions of Java on my computer for some particular reasons. I'm just having to remind Primavera to take the latest version. All right. Now, you might see this, and I can tell you I don't want to see this ever again, but it's telling you that it will help you through the process of adding new activities. Well, I think I can do that on my own. So let's add a new, pro a new activity to our project, and this is where things are going to get a bit strange again if you're used to P6 Professional. So we're going to come in here, and one way of adding a new activity is simply to right-click and just click on Add, or, as you might remember, the Insert key on your keyboard is a great way to add a new activity. There's that little asterisk again with the green background, which is telling us that we are doing something new. And notice that the little floppy disk symbol lit up. So I click on this, and now the activity will be committed. And what's interesting about this is that Primavera does not show us the activity ID. And I just realized we don't seem to have an activity ID here, so I tell you what, we'll take care of that right now. We need to see the activity ID, so let's bring that over from the general category. And this is pretty similar to what you do in P6 Professional. We're moving data that's available from the left to be displayed on the right. I've noticed that several of the default layouts, or what we now call views in P6 Web, don't bother including the activity ID. I personally find that to be a little bit strange. All right, so we've got the activity ID. I also see that the activity name was missing from this particular view, so I'll bring that in. All right, so there's our ID. There's that prefix that I set up. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of other things here, and I'll just kind of spread this out, and you'll see here's all my other columns. Now, what we're going to do now is uh, modify this activity from its current duration of five days, I'm going to make it 10 days. I don't have to type in the D. That's my standard unit of measure. But what I want to show you here is that the moment I took an existing activity and modified it in some fashion, notice that we now have the asterisk with the yellow background. All right, so that's a key point here. I once again need to save. So we find ourselves having to save quite often because if my computer crashes or if I were to hit the back arrow by mistake, go to a different window, you'll notice that these things are all grayed out. There are situations in P6 where my only way of going back to a previous uh, location like the dashboard is to take advantage of the Windows backwards button. But if I click on that right now and I haven't saved all my changes, I am going to lose them. So let's just add one more activity. I'll use the insert key this time. And now you see, of course, the asterisk with the green background. And once more, I have to save that type of change. All right, I want to mention the calendar, because I don't like to get very far into a project until I have my calendar situation worked out. We do it in a different fashion. In P6 Professional, we'd find it up here. We're going to have to go look for it elsewhere. So what we're going to do is, first of all, looks like we are going to have to hit the back arrow. And notice how everything lit up again. It's very frustrating. Occasionally we run into these dead ends where I have, no, I have nothing I can click on. It's all grayed out. And the only thing left is to hit the back arrow. All right, so we're going to go up to Administer. And we're not looking for My Calendar. My Calendar is a personal calendar, just for you as if you, you can control your own time and how you are allocated, allocated to projects. What we're going to look at is enterprise data. And you might remember that calendars were found under the word enterprise in P6 Professional. So at least there's some resemblance to the professional version of the program. Other than I seem to click on little uh, pop-ups like that a lot more. 
So you'll notice we have global data, project data, and other things. Well, when we're talking about calendars, they've split them up, so you find global calendars only right here. Then we have to go to a different list, and that's where we'll see project calendars. Now keep in mind, I think it would be obvious, but in this situation, when you're trying to create a project calendar, that project needs to be open. It's the only way to set up a project calendar. There you see my project. We have to highlight it. Once I highlight it, because I might have more than one project open, Primavera will then allow me to add a calendar. So you see the little plus sign? That's the indicator that I can now add a calendar. And just like with P6 Professional, we don't really create calendars from scratch. We copy an existing calendar. We could copy a calendar from another project. We could copy a resource calendar. Or maybe in this case, I'll copy a global calendar. Something like this one right here. Now, of course, I have to give it a name. And we'll do that over here. I like to indicate what type of uh, work day it is and work week. And also, if I have holidays in my calendar, I like to put that in the name because I think that would make sense. You would want to explain to people right off the bat that either it has them or it doesn't. All right. Now, again, just like before, I've got to save my changes. Notice that the little floppy disk is lit up. And now it's committed. And just like before, if we want to create a holiday, and let me just skip out to, say, Thanksgiving. Let's say we want the day after Thanksgiving to be a holiday. You'll notice that Thanksgiving was already inherited from the calendar that I copied, from that global, as indicated by the globe, calendar. So I click on the next day, and I make it non-work. Click OK, and it becomes a holiday, or an exception, as Primavera would call it, because these can be a lot more than just holidays. Notice, though, I once more have to save my change. There we go. And did you notice that for a moment it was even calling it a global type of exception? It was showing that globe, but when I saved it, it went away. A little bit strange, but that's just one of the quirks that I find with uh, P6 Web. Let's go back to my project, and let's set up this new calendar as the default calendar, because naturally that was my goal here. So I go back to Projects. And I probably should have pointed out that we do see something called EPS right here. So that would be similar to the enterprise project structure that we were used to before. And that, of course, is where we're creating these nodes and rearranging the nodes, things like that. So I wait a moment for that window to load. And you can see this budget log tab in the bottom keeps wanting to display itself. That's kind of uh, annoying, but I get used to it. All right, so here's my project. Right click. Let's go back to Project Preferences, and we'll pick My Calendar. So under the defaults, rather than this corporate standard full time, I'm going to come in here, and we're going to grab my 5 eighths with holidays. Now, here's something I learned the hard way. In P6 Professional, we click on different tabs where you're selecting calendars. Here. You can't tell them apart. I created this. We all know that. But if you give it a name like one of the other ones that's global, it's going to be very confusing. I sometimes, in fact, have resorted to naming the calendar after the project. If I want to use a project-specific calendar, I'll even do something like that so that I don't come into this screen right here and suddenly not realize which of these really is the one I just created a moment ago. Thankfully, I put the word holidays on there. That makes it a little bit more obvious. This was the one I actually copied. Now we'll make this the default by clicking on OK. And I just dragged this up a bit so you can see there is another save command here we have to uh, adhere to. 
And now my new project for all new activities will be using that particular calendar. I would have to go back and change the other ones because they're still using a different calendar, that corporate standard full time. But let's go back into this project one more time for today's lesson. And I want to show you, to make it a little bit more obvious, the other quirk with this program. Because I didn't have a column that showed the activity ID the first time, I want you to see what happens when I add still another activity. So let's come in, and you'll notice we just lost our activity ID column. Well, that's one of the dangers here. This is a view. I made changes to this view, and I forgot to change or save it before we went and started working on the calendar. It's so easy to forget that we made a modification and we didn't save it. There are some situations, look at that, I just rearranged some of these columns by dragging them with my left mouse button. The, arrow, the floppy disk doesn't light up. So this can fool you, because do we have to save that? In this case, Primavera is essentially telling us, no, you're close enough. I'll save that for you. How it decides that, I have no idea. But I did need to save that activity ID column. So I'm going to bring it back very quickly. And there it is. And it always wants to make it the last, but we'll move it back up to the top. All right, so there's my activity ID. Let's go add a new activity. Right click, add activity. This is what looks strange to me at least. There's no activity ID showing up. So it almost appears like Primavera is going to allow us to add an activity with no ID. How is that possible? Well, when we save it and notice that now it's ready for us to save, we'll be good. Now the view, to make sure I don't lose, lose this column I just added, I'm not getting the same visual clue that I get with adding a new activity. I've actually got to come up to View and go down to Save. Now we're okay. If I click and go to a different window, we will have that column still there. Notice though, to back out of this screen right here, when you've saved a view typically, you reach that dead end, I've got to hit the back arrow. Well, that's the end of today's lesson. We're going to talk a lot more about ePPM in the next few weeks. We're finding that more and more of our clients are now using the web-based version of P6, and in some cases, we're teaching them almost side by side. Recently, I did two days of training for a large client, and the first two days, we worked with the schedulers, and we were talking about P6 Professional. Then in the next two days, we only used P6 Web, and these were people that just look at data or specify uh, program details for the schedulers, but they're not the individuals who are typically creating the schedules. So the fact that the program operates a little bit more slowly wasn't quite as big of a deal for them. If you have any questions regarding our training, I would encourage you to visit our website. The name of our company is Construction Science, but all of our training uh, requests are handled through this website. We do web-based training, which is live, just like you're hearing me here although I guess this is really a recording, isn't it? But we do live training, we have videos, and we also do in-person training pretty much anywhere in the world. As long as we have a small group that wants to be trained, we will come to you. Again, I thank you for attending this lesson. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you.